And this time I'm thinking, I want to see my sister. So I immediately find myself in Rockville, Maryland at her home. And she's getting ready to go grocery shopping. She's wearing a beige suit with a green blouse. She's had to go over the house and look for her keys that she had misplaced, had to find her grocery list. And finally, she walks out her front door to get in her blue Monte Carlo Chevrolet. And I feel there's no need for me to go to the grocery store with her, so I let her go on. And I'm gonna pop over then to another sister who lives a few miles away from her. And this other sister had already left home. I was able to determine she had gone grocery shopping herself. So the guides asked me, was I ready to leave this area now? And I agreed and said yes. About two weeks after I had this near-death experience, I was in contact with my sisters and I brought this fact up to her and described and she said, well, how did you know? I didn't see you, you weren't here. I could communicate with the children, with very little children who couldn't speak and who couldn't walk and who were very little and just coming from that place where I was going. And this was amazing communication with them, uh, spiritual communication. We, we never spoke in words. We spoke in, in uh, mental communication. And uh, she had broken hip and nobody understood why she was crying so loud. And uh, the doctors and his parents were very concerned about this. And I said, don't cry anyway. Nobody will understand why do you cry. And she, she stopped crying and she uh, smiled, you know. And, and it was incredible experience for that people who were around. And they looked at her and said, what's happened? Why she's not crying at this time? I want to tell them that, you know, she has this disease. This happened with her but I couldn't communicate with them. After the third day when I was um, back to my body and after three days when I could speak, I said to them that, you know, your daughter is uh, crying because of this. She has a broken hip and, you know, and uh, this is the diagnosis which you are seeking on, you know, and they, they found that it was truth, you know. They were shocked and they were surprised. I've also wondered whether or not people may not just be uh, going to places that they've they've known before in their in their memory well they certainly do that they they do go to places where they have been but they also fairly frequently end up in places where they they didn't know existed on the way and in one case that of dr. George Ritchie mm -hmm. he was actually able to uh, find a place that he had seen in his out-of-body experience I had left that room, went as far as uh, Vicksburg, Mississippi. Saw a man getting ready to go into a white all-night cafe there on the corner of the street there in Vicksburg and asked him if uh, he could tell me if I was going in the right direction to get to Richmond. And this man acted the same way that a boy, ward boy had in the corridor that I passed as I was going out of the hospital uh, like he could neither see me nor hear me. Actually, I walked right through the ward boy going out. But I was so determined to get back to Richmond, that never even stopped me. And when this guy couldn't see me, then I realized that there was a vast change. Something was wrong that these people could neither see nor hear me. The way that I know that it was Vicksburg, Mississippi, because 10 months after this experience, I came back through Vicksburg and recognized the white all-night cafe on the corner. Time and distance as you and I comprehended in this room simply does not exist because simply by wanting to be heading back towards Richmond apparently I was. And before I tell you about the most adventurous kind of out of body traveling I want you to promise me that you'll come to visit me and say goodbye before you actually leave this world. There are occasional reports from people who experience another dramatic form of traveling that they actually leave their body zoom up above the earth and travel far into space and see the earth down below. Dr. Carl Jung, the great Swiss psychiatrist, was an example of this phenomenon when he had his near-death experience in 1944 and a heart attack. 
At the beginning of 1944, I broke my foot, and this misadventure was followed by a heart attack. Extremely strange things began to happen to me. It seemed to me that I was high up in space. Far below, I saw the globe of the Earth bathed in a gloriously blue light. I saw the deep blue sea and the continents. I could see the snow-covered Himalayas. I knew that I was at the point of departing from the Earth. The sight of the Earth from this height was the most glorious thing I had ever seen. After a while in this situation, though, they've become to realize that um, although they can see and understand perfectly what's happening, no one else is able to see or hear them. Uh, so they seem to undergo a state of, of turning inward of the sense of identity, if I could call it that. They become aware that this phenomenon they're experiencing has something to do with what we call death. And it's at that point that the more transcendental parts of the near-death experience tend to unfold. I have this pain, and I'm in darkness. I cannot see anything. Then I cannot move hand, then I cannot move my body. And then I understood that I am not there, but I am. And it scared me. Fear, unknown. Why are all people afraid of darkness? Because they don't know what is in darkness. The fear of darkness is because of unknown. Ununderstandable makes you to be afraid of something. That's why I was afraid too. I was afraid of this darkness. I was afraid of being there. But more afraid was that I was somewhere without my body. But I was. And I was a scientist, you know. I worked on the idea of psychology and languages, you know. I learned physics, I learned chemistry, I learned many other physiologies, uh, anatomy. And all it was based on dialectical materialism, historical materialism. And in my idea, it was impossible to be somewhere without your body. Where is my main component, my life, my body? You know, I was scared to death, <laughs> but I was already dead. And this, that was the amazing feeling to understand that you are, but you are not, if you think you are. If I think, I thought, I am. But if I am, and if I think, why cannot I think positively what's happening around me? And I began to think about light. I saw light outside of darkness, and it shocked me. But first feeling which I had was to come to that light. The first thought which came to me was to go into this light. And I had that movement.